you don't need to be a horror franchise to get the 2000s remake treatment. Just give me something from the 80s that was a hit. Anything. Ah, 1986's April Fool's Day. That'll work. It can even get some holiday play every year, too. Perfect. Forget that cool noose hair poster, wear the 2000s, make it look like a TV guide ad for a Halloween episode of One Tree Hill. Luckily, we don't have to worry about this remake doing the dreaded PG-13. Even the director's name is graphic, the Butcher Brothers, who promise to still keep the twists and the humor of the original. And how the twist is that the Butcher Brothers, Mitchell Altieri and Phil Flores, aren't even brothers. And the other twist? The plot sounds more like a certain other April Fool's Day movie, Slaughter High, where it's a prank gone wrong movie, then some time goes by, and revenge happens. It's good that I'm tackling this. I'm slowly but surely getting back to work after being sick, and last week's episode, Easter Bunny Massacre, also allowed me plenty of Slaughter High references. Hell, there's even a 2007 7 April Fool's movie that also sounds like a Slaughter High remake. They simply substituted Marty Ranson with Melvin? Wait, does that mean it goes in Toxic Avenger territory? No matter, the hit production logo will show us that this movie is edgy. <laughs> Two thousand eight, bro. The music here is by James Stemple and uses a slight reworking of the 1986 theme. Even this starts out with classic April Fool's Day shenanigans like, Oops, I totally severed my finger while cooking for the dinner party. Now fake blood is everywhere. Ha, <laughs> gotcha. Sorry, Wilford. I'm just having a little fun. Good one on me, sir. Also, we'll remake Silver Spoons while we're at it. The characters here have different names than in the original. As funny as it would have been for characters in this movie to have names like Muffy, Skip, and Chaz. This one stars Taylor Cole as Desiree, mixing it up in an April Fool's movie, since she can be seen in a lot of Christmas films, like Long Lost Christmas, Unlocking Christmas, Christmas Festival of Ice, and Pumpkin Everything? Who cares? We can still have pumpkin at Christmas. And wait, another Scout Taylor Compton remake? I'm used to her and the Rob Zombie remakes. Those are less champagne wine and cheese, and more Coors Light and Beard Lice. You'll have to step up your prank game. We opened with an oops severed finger. A simple ink on the mouth is a little lame. Same with the awkward title cut. <laughs> oh. Mmm, it's good that we squeeze the title card in before the hors d'oeuvres. Plus, they have their own cameras around, just in case they want to pitch this as a hot new CW show, Beverly Hills Fools. We'll keep the cue card standing by, too. Torrance, my dear, my wife and I would like to extend our hearty congratulations. Good news, only 16 minutes of the movie left. This is a party that Desiree is throwing for Scout's character, Torrance Caldwell, or something. This just seems like a Tuesday for these idiots. Glad to see you're living the dream. The guy thinks he's Hitchcock. Who? Uh, he directed that tight Vince Vaughn movie. Try to keep up, babe. Everyone has arrived at the ball, the blonde, and the soundtrack. Don't drown out this hot Gossip Girl track with your exquisite dialogue. So, are you still working with those retarded, developmentally disabled children? Did someone say my dog's name? That's your dog's name? They are given one director's note, act rich. You know, as someone who writes gossip for a living, I sure would appreciate any light you could shed on these cries for attention. 
Mm-hmm. Midnight in the Garden of Abercrombie and Fitch has lots of drama. I'm not too sure I care about the characters in this. All of them look like a guest villain on Scandal. See, here's the DA's son, Rufy Von Drink Up Fast the Third. When's the prank gonna come in? We've replaced Torrance's dad with Richard Gilmore. Let's see if she notices. But it's hard to be too mad at the movie. I want to be a bartender like the Jerry Maguire in the cocktail. And then it's gonna be like... A cocktail reference. Someone's a fan of my Roadhouse review. So this is Barbie and Milan. I took a wild stab that their names were Barbie and Milan. I was right. Besides, Drunk Peter is still the best character. The campaign's like a well-oiled machine. Campaign machine. Politics. <laughs> it's like it was improvised and he just simply read the bullet points. Anyway, Ryan is totally into her, but she doesn't notice. I'll bet they'll get together in the season finale. <laughs> Wait, aren't I supposed to be watching a slasher movie? But there's so many questions. Torrance relays to her that she's just gotten an agent. I hope this means good things for Torrance's acting career. And bro, everyone can see you're into Milan. When do you get the nerve and ask her out? Who's that, Milan? Mm-hmm. We're just old friends. Be weird. Not since Screech and Lisa have I felt the romance. Now the party's getting started. Bert the Machine Kreischer is here. I want to follow the zany comedy going on in the background. Way less sinister than this. <sighs> the champagne's hitting me pretty hard. Yeah. Why do I feel like that's the most common thing said at Desiree's parties? This is nothing like the prank from Slaughter High. This is more Slaughter Prep School. Oh yeah, get this on tape. Once this hits the internet, one is finished. I'm pretty sure that tape is called Evidence. But remember, it really is all fun and games. Light-hearted tomfoolery. April Fool's Day, bitch. Hey. So, I'm supposed to root for the killer in this, I guess. Going back to the theater, Mulholland! Hey! That is classic, Desiree. Yes, Milan has had a terrible accident, but do we look hot enough for the sexy pranks gone wrong calendar? Whoa, it's rare to see shenanigans end up in court in one of these. He's in big trouble. I have no choice but to revoke his responsibilities as executor of the Cartier estate. As in, Blaine doesn't get quite as much money. He's still rich, though. He'll be fine. Even the news will handle this with the dignity it deserves. But someone died. Yeah. At a ball, this is supposed to celebrate someone coming out, not going out. She worked all night preparing her jokes around Milan's tragic death. Eh, they're just describing to us the scenes we just saw, and the prologue was already too long to begin with. Let's take a break so they can catch people up who just walked in. Come see us at our next convention, Midwest Gaming Classic, April 5th through the 7th in Milwaukee, where we'll be there all weekend long with prints, DVD exclusive episodes, movies, and my book, Class of 86, Marty Ranson approved. Get your tickets today at MidwestGamingClassic.com and hope to see you there. Now that we're back, the news is here to remind us that it's Milan's fault and not Blaine's, the sexual predator. So, to be fair, these debutantes started coming out of the woodwork after the story broke, so they could be riding the media bandwagon for all we know. This has been Blue Check News, and now sports. This is still going. The news wrap-up feels almost as long as the whole opening sequence. Okay, now we're at one year later. God only knows whose lives they destroyed in that time. You want a real April Fool's prank, you gotta make sure that between the prank and the revenge that the nuclear holocaust happens. No one sees the acid rain coming. Blaine has had a tough year. Don't feel bad, Blaine. It happens to a lot of guys. Who among us hasn't mixed up the guacamole and wasabi when preparing the sushi platter? If people start getting off screen to death, I guess then we'll pick up if it'll have the same twist as the original, where no one actually died. 
Or if they're just gonna prank each other by making them think their dogs are in the pool. Hmm, yep, fade to black. I'm guessing he's still alive. Desiree has been having terrible nightmares in the past year. Nightmares that the sheets were cotton instead of silk. It's been a lonely year for her. Maybe she'll decide to decorate the guest room. Perhaps a few paintings of fruit bowls can do. Not only is Milan's death still news, but is still a mystery? What mystery? The mystery of was her death filmed in SD or HD? Everyone saw her fall. I actually applaud these invitations to the gathering to remember her death. When I watched Easter Bunny Massacre, where literally the same thing happened, they just printed a small cheap-ass piece of paper on some trash. This movie took time for its invitations to bring characters together for a slaughter. Now they can all reminisce about how much they all suck. What up, it's Blaine. You leave a message if you want. I can care less. Oof, I even hate his voicemail. But Desiree still has the pranking spirit in her. <laughs> Shit! I'm sorry! Ha! <laughs> Everyone loves the hit-by-car prank. Happy April Fool's Day, asshole! What would happen if they just simply ignored the death invitations? People in these kinds of movies should try that. Blaine tried to. He didn't even notice his invitation. That's because it was buried underneath all the invitations from Marty Ranson and also Kenny Hampson from Terror Train. These revenge slasher killers don't understand the hell I've gone through. I've had to spend the last year in a three-star hotel with no waffles in the complimentary breakfast. Time flies when you're visiting your friend's grave. One simple cut, and there's a plane that just whizzed by. Torrance and Ryan also got the invitations, and Peter is there too, ready to pitch them his long-awaited cocktail reboot. We're gonna give it the Maverick treatment. Uh, who's this guy? You guys expecting a package? Who's it from? I figured we'd be out here arguing for a while, so I ordered a pizza. The message is that if one doesn't take responsibility for Milan's death, they'll keep dying, as it's written by Milan, supposedly. This movie's best friend is the fact that it really is the same movie I watched last week with Easter Bunny Massacre. And that movie was such a slog of repetitive dialogue and nothing happening that with this movie, I'm like, oh, uh, there's some video of the dude supposedly dying in the pool. Stuff is happening. A plus, five stars out of five. A lot of characters are unlikable, but they are characters with different personalities. Easter Bunny Massacre had slow motion dancing and a bag of chips. That's it. They did find Charles' body, so will I have to eat my words on him being off screen to death? Or he's still alive and so committed to the prank, he's actually gonna drown himself? Time for the bro pact, guys. Treat each other like shit, accuse each other, and do not go to the police. Why? I don't know. It's not like they'd ever go to jail for anything anyway. Hell, Peter is running for Senate. He can pull some strings. He'll just give the cops his hilarious buddy Peter cutout, which, by the way, I want one of those. Now he must get back to answering emails from his donors asking if he's secretly Jake Lacey. Ryan still has his filming gigs, that's nice. Yeah, this beauty pageant is okay and all, but can one of you belly flop off the balcony and onto a table? Ryan may be in danger and no one will help. See, the crowd is there sucking on helium to pass the time. Barbie is okay too. Nothing is gonna get in the way of her being crowned Miss Sarah Michelle Geller. We're close enough already, might as well go Go full, I know what you did last summer. The other movie did. Though the music is just weird sometimes. Do you mind? 
Was that supposed to be a meat cute? Their love will have to wait. We knew it was a mistake to keep electricity and water next to the beauty queens. Wait a minute, we're starting to put it together. This is all a prank to get back at Desiree for her years of over-the-top April Fool's joke and possibly inheritance money. No, no, don't jump to the end, you idiot! While I try not to get ahead of myself that this scene is going to do the fake out we're filming a movie gag. Oh no, I'm sure the movie is The Prowler all of a sudden. Kidding, totally a fake movie. Let director Patrick Bateman clean up the set and we'll do a take two. I'd rather watch that fake movie than this confusing jargon. All right, either either Peter and Milan continue this affair and Barbie killed her, or, or B, Peter killed Milan to cover up a potential scandal. Yeah, but then who killed Barbie? I think we all know who killed Barbie. Haul this man in and take away his flammables. They actually do call the police, finally. Lane Cartier. Listen, son, these pranks, they need to stop. Oh, well, we tried. No need to contact any other police. Knowing how this movie ends doesn't make certain characters less stupid. And stop tempting me. I already told you I want this cutout, which looks like he's placing an order for hot dogs for him and a couple of friends. Peter is the one in the movie that seems to know that it's also a comedy. Please, Do you understand? You have to explain this. My value wagon. <laughs> And these are the sounds that I make when I'm chased by a van. <laughs> Can the rest of it seriously just be him running from the van? I'm actually very disappointed that he's gone. He's one character that I actually could have seen being in the original. Now I'm off to also buy a van with his image on it. Who wouldn't want to come inside for the free candy? Please keep the van and the rest of it. Hey, look, where are you? Tell me exactly where you're at. Shit! Oh my god, the face on the van sees me. It's looking right into my car's soul. It's easy to see where the killer is going to, since the van sticks out like a sore face. He's driven right to Torrance's movie shoot, where Torrance is really getting into her shower death character. Oh, my, my, my God. You look like Milan. Desiree, it's a wig. It's for the movie. I'm not sure if Desiree is very smart. Hell, they're just now figuring out that some of their friends are perverts. For the past year, I've caught him more than once watching me. Watching you? Yeah. Oh yeah, Mr. The Champagne is making me dizzy. You're one to judge. It's gonna be really weird when this is all a prank. Why would she have time during her movie shoot for this scheme? Or Peter taking a break from his Senate campaign? Or this guy staying underwater for a long time? Or her rigging an electricity death when she's supposed to be being crowned? And we've still got 20 minutes left, so I doubt Ryan is the killer, despite his creeper room, where it looks like what became of the lead from getting it on as an adult. Of course, he has a sinister video room filled with tapes secretly recording his friends. Look at this. He has endless Kris Jenner footage from her backyard. And kudos to him for <laughs> sort of calling the police again. Look, uh, there have been three murders. We believe we know the person responsible. Yeah, it probably wasn't an important part of the 911 call. Doesn't matter anyway, Ryan is also pretending to be dead. Let's find out who he left his sleazy tapes to in his will. I hope it's me. Seriously, the killer isn't the most sinister one here. Watch this. Are you are you still with your director friend? No, he's having rehearsal with one of the child actors. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, what? Forget the killer. We need to look into this movie set. It's probably part of the prank, like how Blaine is the mastermind and the cops are just actors. Whoops, spoiler. Time to take a break so I can also take some aspirin before getting to the climax. The following feature has been rated B, boring, by the Motion Pictures Association of America. We're back and it's a 2000s remake, so someone has to be chased around in a mansion. The movie has a lot of faults of a remake from this era, in that they're all kind of shot the same and work pretty hard at just being generic, especially when you have an idea of where it's going. Just put down the gun and we'll, and we'll sort everything out, okay? I have a better idea. Okay, so it's her for now. 
Is it going to turn out to be a prank? I don't know. I'm sure it's totally a coincidence that her character is an actress. It is a step up from the last remake I watched, which was the It's Alive remake, with its terrible special effects and half the movie having awful ADR. This one, eh, it does a fine job of looking like an April Fool's episode of Pretty Little Liars. I mean, this is a movie where Torrance says she's simply mad they ruined her special night at the ball, and Desiree helped off Milan because she was mad about Blaine's inheritance, and they all hate Desiree guts so much that they got her to trash talk all her dead friends so they could get it on camera to mess with her as an undercover sting operation so that Blaine will rightfully receive his inheritance. It isn't nearly as memorable or as funny as the first, but it's not a carbon copy remake. It does its own thing with a completely different plot. The first had to do with the lead pitching a murder mystery island. Here, they just hate her. Why? Because you were always such an insufferable bitch. Don't you all have better things to do? Hell, Torrance says that they used her movie special effects guy for the fake deaths. That movie is going unnecessarily over budget. There is the final-ish twist, though. It blinks, Desiree. See? So it kind of does the alternate ending of the first, where one really does die at the end. Though here, there will finally be justice in court. I hereby name Blaine Cartier, executor and sole beneficiary of the family trust. More money will be the best way for him to get over Desiree's tragic death. Kidding, he wanted her dead this whole time. The most money ever used to concoct an accidental death. It's about time we see a Murder, She Wrote villain win one of these episodes. I don't know, this movie was whatever. It's one of those cases where it's not like it's terrible, just that it's so middle of the road, there's no reason to watch it when you have the original. Thanks for watching everyone, be sure to subscribe to our channel today, click the notification bell, and please, do it for the fake cops that Blaine spent so much of his inheritance on. Man, if this is another goddamn April Fool's joke, I'ma shoot somebody in the ass.